was so Christmassy. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill and we're coming up to Christmas, which is my favorite, favorite time of year. And so in celebration of that, I thought I would tell you one of my favorite, favorite fairy tales. Hans Christian Andersen's story that inspired the insanely popular Disney movie Frozen. I'm going to be telling you the story of the Snow Queen. Once upon a time, there was a demon who had invented the most wicked mirror the world had ever known. This mirror only reflected the bad things in the world, and so the demon and his cohorts flew around showing people their own faces, freaking them out and making them hate themselves. The demon was so proud of what he had made and so pleased with its effects that he decided that he should take this mirror up to heaven in order to mock the angels with it. On the way up, however, the wicked mirror was dropped and when it hit the ground, it shattered into thousands of millions of billions of tiny pieces. Some parts of the mirror broke into shards that were incredibly thin to the point where you could barely see them and they'd stab into people's hearts and turn them into just unfeeling lumps of ice. And some pieces of the mirror were so impossibly small smaller than grains of sand. They would fly about in the wind and get caught in people's eyes. And when a grain of the mirror's glass got caught in someone's eye, that person would no longer be able to see any of the good in the world. They could only see the bad and the ugly. And so eventually, that's what that person would become. Cut to the present day in a big city with so many buildings that the houses were practically touching each other. And it was in two of these very houses that lived Gerda and Kai, two small children who were best friends so close to each other that they were practically brother and sister. All day, every day, the two of them would play up in the roof gardens of their homes, jumping from one to the other, singing songs and admiring the roses they grew there. When winter time came and the snow started coming in strong, it made it a little bit harder for them to play, but the two of them made it work. And when the evenings came and they were no longer allowed to be out and visiting each other's homes, they would sit at their windows opposite each other, melt away some of the ice to make a little hole so that they could see each other through it. While Kai was getting ready for bed, he looked out the window to see a snowflake larger than the rest falling down to rest on the windowsill. And then it grew and grew and it kept on growing until it took the form of a tall and beautiful woman. Her eyes twinkled like stars, but there was no warmth or peace in them. She was all ice lovely and beautiful, but beneath it cold and hard. She nodded at Kai and beckoned through the window for him to come and to join her. But Kai had the correct response and freaked out and just leapt away from the window instantly. A snowflake had just turned into a woman on his windowsill. Good boy, Kai. That is exactly what you do when a snowflake turns into a woman. You get out of there. Remove yourself from that situation! Spring arrived and summer followed and finally the two friends were allowed back up on the roof to play in the garden. One summer day, while examining the rose bushes, Kai suddenly felt a, a sharp pain in his heart and something had gotten in his eye. Gerd came close to examine his eyeball and see if anything was there, but Kai shoved her away angrily and kicked over some roses and stormed off. All right, Mr. Overreaction, gosh. As time went on, Gerda watched her best friend seem to suddenly become older and develop a nasty, cruel, and cynical nature. She resolved to keep being his best friend, even if he was being a giant jerk face. Gerda didn't know it, but Kai had gotten into his eye and his heart pieces of that wicked mirror. The months passed and became colder until one day it was winter again and Kai was shoving past Gerda because he was going for a morning sledge with the other boys in the town square and he didn't want to play with her. The boldest of the boys were hitching their sledges to the backs of farm carts in order to ride around the streets Marty McFly style. At some point, a big fancy white sleigh came into the square and it went around and around until finally Kai worked up the courage to hitch his own sledge onto the back of it. Immediately the big white sleigh picked up speed, shooting off through the streets and towards the town gates. Kai was a little bit frightened and tried to untie his sledge from the back of the sleigh, but every time he did, the driver would turn around and nod to him in such a familiar way that 
He couldn't quite bring himself to release his sledge. The sleigh drove out of town further and further until they were way beyond the farthest house and finally the driver stopped and turned around to face him and he was looking into the eyes of the Snow Queen. You must be so cold, she said, and invited him to come and sit beside her in the sleigh where she wrapped him up in her big bearskin cloak. It should have been warm, but Kai felt like he was sinking into a snowdrift. Then the Snow Queen kissed him on the forehead, which just made him colder and went straight to his already half-frozen heart. At first, he felt like he was dying, but then it was gone. He didn't feel warm, exactly, but he couldn't feel the cold anymore. Another kiss left him with no memory of Gerda or his grandmother or anyone back at home, and now he thought only of the Snow Queen. Throughout this long, long winter, the townspeople had come to the conclusion that little Kai must have died out in the snow somehow. Everybody cried, but Gerda cried the longest. Finally, spring came, and Gerda tried to force herself to accept what had happened by saying out loud, that Kai is dead and gone. But the sunshine and the swallows answered back that they didn't believe it, and if Gerda was honest with herself, neither did she. Something very strange had happened that winter day, and she was going to find out what. And in a moment of grief-stricken indignance, she put on her new red shoes and resolved to go and show them to Kai, damn it! She was gonna find him, and he was gonna look at her shoes, and he was gonna say how great they were. And so she went to confront the river that ran just outside of town. Hey, they say you drowned my friend! The river didn't respond because it was a river, and Gerda became sad once again. She still wanted to show Kai her new shoes though, so she hopped into a nearby rowboat and paddled out to the center of the river to drop her shoes in. But very quickly, Gerda was caught up in the current and the river was washing her downstream at an incredible pace, leaving her fancy brand new red shoes behind in the water. Great. Eventually, the boat came past a very peculiar home with a beautiful garden and two big wooden soldiers standing on either side of the door. Then out from the home came a super old woman. She carried a big staff and wore the hugest sun hat that Gerda had ever seen, covered all over with patterns of different kinds of flowers. The old woman waded out into the water and pulled the boat in using the curly head of her staff. Gerda was pleased to have been freed from the boat and told this woman everything that had happened to her, all about little Kai and the rose garden and the way they used to play and how strange he'd gotten lately and a little bit mean, really, if she was honest about it and how he went missing and was possibly dead and she just wanted to show him her new shoes but now they were way down river. And the old woman patted her on the back and said, there, there, come and eat some cherries. As they entered the house, the old woman locked the front door because she was really a witch who had wanted a child for a very long time and Gerda was just so pretty. As she ate the cherries, Gerda began to realize that she couldn't quite remember why she'd gone to the river in the first place. Having listened to what Gerda said about the rose garden and how she associated them with Kai, the witch used her magic to make all of the roses in her pretty beautiful garden disappear back down into the earth. Many days passed, so many that Gerda couldn't count them. She'd lost all memory of how she'd gotten here or what life was like before until one day she was looking at the witch's sun hat and noticed one flower on it that wasn't anywhere to be found in the witch's garden. The flower was a rose and suddenly Gerda had a moment a little bit like Rapunzel at the end of Tangled where she suddenly had flashes of memory all about how she'd gotten here and Kai and the rose garden on the roof and everything came flooding back to her. Gerda rushed into the house and bashed her way out through the front door and started just running as fast as she could. But it wasn't spring as it had been in the garden. In the real world, time had been passing and it was now very late autumn. She'd lost so much time. Eventually, Gerda ran out of breath and had to stop to rest. As the snow began to fall around her, a crow came past and asked if she was okay. After listening to Gerda's story about little Kai and everything that had happened, the crow said that Perhaps his sweetheart had seen Kai. Around the time that Kai went missing, a young boy had come to live with the princess in her palace. As the crow described what this boy looked like and Gerda said, Oh no, his hair's more like a shaggy light brown. And the crow was like, Oh yeah, it could be light brown in certain lights. 
Gerda came to the conclusion that the boy must be Kai, and so the two of them planned kind of a heist kind of a deal alongside the crow's tame sweetheart who lived at the palace, all to get Gerda into the castle so that she could see Kai. The sweetheart left a key for them under the mat so that they could open the door to the back stairs that would lead up to the princess's bedroom. The room contained two of the most comfortable looking beds Gerda had ever seen. In the nearest of the two lay a boy, and as she crept towards it, Gerda began whispering Kai's name. But when the prince awoke and turned around, it turned out that actually he only looked a bit like Kai from behind. Gerda apologized profusely and told her story to the princess and the prince, who, as it turned out, were very lovely people and very understanding about the whole thing. They offered Gerda the chance to stay with them at the palace permanently, but Gerda turned them down, asking only for a carriage so that she could continue looking for her friend. And they obliged. And actually, they kind of overdid it with the carriage because they gave her a chariot made of solid gold and a bunch of escorts who all had solid gold crowns as well. It was like really bright to look at because there was so much shiny, shiny gold. Gerda bid the crows and the royals farewell and off she went in her chariot of gold. Have I mentioned that it was gold? On their way through a dark wood, the chariot continued to shine. It was so shiny, in fact, that all of the robbers who lived in that wood were so struck by it that they couldn't resist going and catching the horses and killing all the escorts and dragging Gerda out of her seat. In fact, the old woman who dragged Gerda out of her seat looked at her and threatened to eat her because apparently that's the kind of person she is. A cannibal type of person. But as this robber woman drew her knife to kill Gerda, something really amazing happened. A girl about Gerda's age appeared out of nowhere and bit the woman on the ear, just chomping down and demanding Gerda as a playmate. This little robber girl forced Gerda to trade clothes with her and then they sat in the golden carriage being driven around for the rest of the day with the little robber girl pretending that she was a princess and telling Gerda that it was okay. None of the other robbers were going to kill her unless, of course, the little robber girl was unhappy with her. Gerda tried to tell her story and everything about little Kai and what had happened, because that had worked every other time. But this time it just made the little robber girl say, no, I've changed my mind. Don't worry, none of the other robbers will kill you, because if I'm upset with you, I'll just do it myself. Oh, thank you, that's really, that's encouraging. Eventually, the carriage came to a ruined castle, which was the place where the robbers stayed. And the robber girl announced that tonight, Gerda would be staying in her bed with all of her pets as well. By pets, she mostly meant pigeons. Pigeons everywhere, just wild wood pigeons that she'd trapped in her room by blocking off all the exits they could possibly take. The robber girl grabbed one of the pigeons by the legs and shook it until its wings were flapping about and then shoved it in Gerda's face and demanded that she kiss it. This girl is a psycho. Then the robber girl said to Gerda, I want you to meet my bae. By which she meant her reindeer, whose name is Bay. B-A-E, that's the reindeer's name. I'm not even kidding. She pulled Bay the reindeer into the room from seemingly nowhere and explained that it was tied up because if they didn't tie it up, it would just run away because it hates being there. Bubs. And every night I pull out my knife and I tickle his throat with it and he's so scared. It's hilarious. Just watch. That night, Gerda found herself in the robber girl's headlock while the robber girl slept. Gerda didn't sleep. She was, she was awake like this. Just the whole night, just awake. But during this night of terror, the pigeons up in the rafters whisper down to Gerda that they've seen Kai. They saw him riding next to the Snow Queen when her royal iciness came past. She was headed to Lapland, we reckon. Ask the reindeer, he's from there. Yeah, 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 she's got a home there. She's got a summer home there, but usually she lives up in the North Pole. Gerda shivered with excitement on learning exactly where Kai would be, and the robber girl told her to lie still or she would stab her. Gerda told the robber girl what she'd learned about Kai's location. The robber girl looked very unhappy, but asked the reindeer if he knew the way. When Bay answered that of course he did, Lapland was his home, the robber girl looked him dead in the eyes and said, I know you know what's up, because this girl talks loud and you're always eavesdropping, so even though I don't want to let you go, I will if you promise 
to get this girl to the Snow Queen's castle. And the robber girl told them that they should wait until all the robbers had gone out and her mother had gotten drunk and passed out on the floor, and then they would make their escape. She lifted Gerda up onto the reindeer's back and tied her on. She gave them food to last them several days and she cut the reindeer loose. Bay dashed as fast as he could towards home with the northern lights leading his way. When Bay and Gerda ran out of food, they stopped at a dilapidated hut belonging to a strange old woman frying fish. After listening to Gerda's story, the Finn woman just sat and didn't respond for a good long time. Bay reveals that he knows that this woman is powerful. Surely she could give Gerda some kind of magic draft that would give her the strength of a dozen men. Surely that would be enough to defeat the Snow Queen, wouldn't it? The Finn woman grabbed the reindeer and pulled him aside into a corner. She tells him to hush and explains that Kai right now is very happy with the Snow Queen. The splinters of the wicked mirror that had gotten into his heart and into his eye would have to come loose before he was freed from the Snow Queen's palace. Otherwise, he would never be human again and he would remain in her power forever. Gerda already had greater power than the Finn woman was capable of giving her. She'd made it across several countries already, barefoot in the snow. We can't tell her that though, or it'll wreck it. If she can't save Kai from the Snow Queen on her own, no one can. The Finn woman gave Bay directions to the Snow Queen's castle and instructed him to leave Gerda at the edge of the gardens and come straight back to her. Gerda made straight for the door and a snowstorm seemed to whip up out of nowhere right in front of her and a whole regiment of snowflakes came for her but not from the sky. They ran along the ground living and growing monstrous. They were the queen's advance guard. They took all kinds of forms, gigantic porcupines, knots of snakes, fat little bears all charging towards her. Gerda just continued to march forwards through the snow and said to herself the Lord's Prayer and her breath froze into fog as it exited her mouth and formed clouds that just grew bigger and bigger until they thickened into a host of heaven's angels decked out in shining armor and with shields and spears. They did battle with the snowflake army, shattering them into thousands of pieces with their spears. And Gerda just kept walking fearlessly between the two forces. In the room at the very center of the palace was a great big frozen lake. And in the middle of this lake, was the Snow Queen's throne. Now, all the while that Gerda had been hunting for him, Kai had sat in this room, blue and purple with the cold. He spent all of his time dragging around sharp, flat pieces of ice into patterns, trying to make something that would impress the Snow Queen. And the Snow Queen told him that if he could find the word eternity in the pieces, then she would be so impressed that she would let him be his own master, and she would give him the whole world, and, a new pair of skates. But Kai just couldn't do it. Cue Gerda who busts in through the door and she rushed over to Kai and she hugged him and she kissed him and she cried and some of her hot tears landed above Kai's heart and they melted the ice that was there and the piece of mirror was washed away. Suddenly able to feel his emotions again, Kai began to cry as well and so the grain of mirror in his eye was washed out too. He remembered her and the two friends danced around happily and all the pieces of ice were so caught up in the joy that they danced too. And when the pieces of ice fell down again, they fell into the exact position that Kai needed. They fell into the position of eternity. The two friends left the palace arm in arm, talking and dreaming of home. And wherever they went, the sun broke through the clouds and the grass sprung up beneath their feet. Summer had come at last. So that was my Christmas fairy tale for you all, the Snow Queen. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to hit the like button so that I can see that you enjoyed it with my eyeballs. Also, I would appreciate it if you left a comment below telling me other fairy tales that you might like to hear. If you'd like, you can subscribe to the channel because I make videos here every single week. If you're feeling the Christmas spirit or even if you just like fairy tales, share this video on your favorite social media website or link it to a friend who you know likes fairy tales as well. I hope you're all having a lovely season of happy, jolly, fun times. Email this to your grandma. And for now, that is it. I am done and I will see you guys some other time. Look, I wore my snowy shirt today.
because it's Christmas. Despite the fact that it's summer here. <laughs>